Star Stable Online is one of my all-time favorite games. I've been playing for almost eight years now with no plans to stop anytime soon. I've seen a couple of Star Stable icebergs around, but none of them were quite what I was imagining. A lot of them felt either really bare bones or overwhelmed with stuff that felt kind of unnecessary. So for my iceberg, I tried to keep only stuff related to the game's lore, development, and general history. I'm not really going to mention anything about YouTuber drama or anything that happened outside of the game and its development itself, except for a couple small things here and there. Also, quick rundown if you're unfamiliar with how an iceberg video works. An iceberg list documents facts about a certain topic, starting from the most well-known and basic knowledge, all the way down to the most obscure and forgotten. I'm going to go through and explain everything on my list. Placement of each fact is, of course, always up for debate. I just picked what felt right to me. Hopefully there's nothing super important that I overlooked. Honestly, I could have made this list 10 miles long and described every little detail about the game, but I tried not to overload this list with too much stuff. Tier 1. Star Stable Online. Star Stable Online, or SSO, is an MMORPG created in 2011 by the Swedish company now known as Star Stable Entertainment. Star Stable is one of the most popular horse-based games to date. It's primarily aimed towards young girls, but the game has a pretty diverse player base of all kinds of horse lovers. Starshine Legacy Starshine Legacy was the first installment in the Star Stable universe. It's a series of four CD-ROM games developed by Pixel Tales released in 2005, each one following a different teenage girl and their magical horse. Lisa and Starshine, Linda and Meteor, Anne and Concord, and Alex and Tin Can. The main story of Star Stable Online is a sort of continuation of the original Starshine Legacy game set a couple years in the future, as you, the player, get to meet and team up with the four girls. The games aren't really regarded as canon in SSO anymore, but the basic structure and world building of the story still stands. Jorvik Jorvik is the name of the fictional island all of the Star Stable games take place on. The island is deeply connected with both horses and magic. Pandoria Pandoria is another dimension that is intertwined with Jorvik. A lot of the world's magic stems from there. You can visit the dimension in some of the Starshine Legacy games, as well as in the main story quest of SSO. And no, it's not supposed to be a copy of Pandora from Avatar. The Starshine Legacy games came out four years before James Cameron's Avatar, so if anything, he copied Pandoria. Soul Riders The four main characters of Star Stable and Starshine Legacy are known as the Soul Riders. They, along with their magical horses, are the four prophesized protectors of the island. The player eventually becomes a surprise fifth soul rider. Keepers of Aedine The Keepers of Aedine, also called the Druids, also work to protect Jorvik, and serve as guides and teachers for the soul riders. Aedine Aedine is like the goddess of the world. It's said that she brought light and life to Jorvik by playing her harp. The Jorvik flag has a harp on it in honor of her, and there's a statue of her in the appropriately named Aedine's Plaza in Jorvik City. Dark Core Dark Horror is one of the main antagonists of the game. They're a shady oil company run by the mysterious Mr. Sands. The lore around Mr. Sands is really interesting and complicated, but I'm not going to go into it too much here, so this doesn't turn into me doing nothing but explaining lore for an hour. Dark Riders The Dark Riders are like the anti-Soul Riders. They work for Dark Core and are consistent opponents for the player. Right now, the Dark Riders are Sabine, Jessica, or Jay, and Katya. There's an unknown fourth soul rider that has yet to appear. I think she needed to be, like, summoned or something? Concept art was shown for her a while ago, but it's been quiet ever since. Or, well, it was. While in the process of editing this video, a new design and name were shown for the fourth dark rider, now named Arissa. Sure, why not? Garnok. Garnok is the spiritual final boss. Dark Core's entire goal is to summon this creature from Pandoria into Jorvik. His true form has never been seen, but he appears to be some sort of kraken-like creature. You have to escape from or fight his tentacles in a couple of story quests. GED GED, standing for Global Energy Domination, is the other main antagonist force of Star Stable. They originally start out as your average power-hungry, global warming-causing company, but they eventually team up with Dark Core, which makes them even more threatening. Mr. Kembell and Ms. Drake are notable figures in the company you butt heads with a couple times. Star Riders Okay, now we're moving away from the lore and starting to get into the mechanics of the game. Star Ridership is the premium subscription of the game. The game is free to play up to level 5, but to continue from there you do have to get a subscription, as is common for these sorts of games. Personally, I have the Pay One deal, so I no longer have to do monthly or yearly renewals. Star Coins and Jorvik Shillings These are the two currencies the game uses. Jorvik Shillings are your basic currency and can be obtained through quests and races, Star coins are the premium currency that can only be purchased, but star riders get a weekly allowance of 100 star coins every Saturday. Tier 2 Fripp's Origins 
Frip is a little magical squirrel thing that helps the soul riders and druids in the fight against Garnok. He's an interesting little critter, because it's originally assumed he's from Pandoria, but he eventually reveals he doesn't remember where he's from at all. He just knows it's not Jorvik and it's not Pandoria. Idris' Origins Idris is the mysterious and charismatic circus owner and resident Tumblr sexy man. He actually is a Pandorian. He's the only actual person from Pandoria we've seen, but his reasons for coming and staying on Jorvik are unknown. Golden Leaf Castle Golden Leaf Castle in Golden Hills Valley has a pretty interesting history. It's actually called, uh, excuse my pronunciation, Marchingast Castle? And it's been visible but inaccessible since 2017, at least according to the wiki. I would have assumed it's been there since Golden Hills release, but that was in 2012, so I don't remember. It got a remodel back in 2019, but remains unable to be visited, although you can't get much closer now. Roles. Roles in the Star Stable community are literally just online role-playing sessions. It usually has a theme of either rider, where you pretend to be the horse rider, which makes sense, or wild, where you pretend to be a wild horse. They're commonly advertised in the global chat that everyone at any town or stable on the map can see, and have been a staple of the community for ages. Yes, I too was a wild horse role player back in the day. Riding clubs. Another staple of the community is riding clubs. Players can pay a small star coin fee to start their own riding club, invite players, and then do whatever they want. Some people theme their clubs to a certain real-life equestrian discipline, some have clubs with the main purpose of role-playing, and some have clubs that are just for hanging out. There have been some absolutely massive clubs in the past, but I don't think there are any dominating my server right now. Free Horses All horses in the game are purchased with star coins, with the exception of three. Obviously, there's your starter horse, the one you create at the beginning of the game. Then there's the Rune Runner. By doing certain daily quests with the druids, you can slowly work your way up a reward tree until you unlock the Rune Runner, completely for free. Lastly, there is the 10-year anniversary horse from 2021, the Soul Steed. It was made available at the 10th birthday party for free, and has returned every year since, but for a price. Only free that one year. Horse Generations Over the years, Star Stable's art style and game engine have evolved. All horses are categorized into three generations. The old charming but janky Gen 1 and Gen 2 horse breeds are slowly being replaced with the newly updated Gen 3 horses. Character Update 2 To stay up to date with the new art styles and game engines as previously mentioned, the player character was also updated in June 2023. The new models and animations received mixed reviews, but personally I love them. They're such a huge step up from the little potatoes we had before. <laughs> Championships Championships are competitive group races that are held at specific times each day. There's approximately one for each major town or stable, with a few exceptions. Highest Stats Something important to consider when doing championships is your stats. Each piece of clothing has certain stats that boost you or your horse's abilities, and if you want to be a serious contender, it's highly recommended you have clothes and gear with the highest stats you can get. Fun fact I meant to add to the list and forgot, there used to only be one pair of pants to have a plus 5 swiftness stat, Eventually, the stats on other pants were changed to plus five as well, so people could wear more than just one pair of pants to have the highest stats. Star Stable Horses app. This is a companion app to Star Stable, where you can raise foals into full-grown horses, then buy and transfer them into the game to play with. Fairies. There are fairies that can take you to and from Fort Pinta, Jarlaheim, Cape West, and South Huff. Unlike the horse trailers you can use to fast travel to anywhere on the island, fairies are free of charge. They do, however, come and go on a schedule, so if you're unlucky enough to just barely miss that fairy, you're gonna have to wait a couple minutes for it to come back. Jan Jarl Jan Jarl, or maybe John Jarl, I'm not sure, is an important historical figure in Jorvik's history, being the Christopher Columbus of the island. Like, literally. He claimed land that already had multiple native groups living on it to colonize. Bet you didn't expect a strong anti-colonialism message in this horse game, huh? Cloud Kingdom the Cloud Kingdom is a temporary sub-area you can visit during the June Rainbow Festival. It was added before the Rainbow Festival was a thing, but is now tied to the event and returns consistently each year. Jorvik Snow Snow on Jorvik was originally added in the first Christmas update in 2012, turning the game into a winter wonderland for a few weeks. Due to technical issues, the yearly snowfall was removed in 2017 and replaced with a temporary sub-area of the Winter Village instead. In 2020, the ability to toggle a snow filter in the overworld was added, which changed the skies to an Aurora Borealis, and had light snowfall in the air, but still not on the ground. 
Finally, in 2022, a true snowfall was added back to the game. It was able to be toggled on and off, and now the snow on the ground is interactive, with the snow having varying thickness that can be walked through, leaving behind trails. Devil's Gap Devil's Gap was an inaccessible area in Jarlheim until recently. It was locked behind a gate with nothing really there until May of 2023, when the area was properly released as part of a quest line. It was also briefly seen in Starshine Legacy, but with a much different appearance. Book series. There are two Star Stable book trilogies featuring the Soul Riders. The first trilogy is loosely based on the Starshine Legacy storyline. Special Gates and Animations. Some horses have a unique animation or gait specific to their breed, usually based off of a signature move of that breed in real life. The first one added was the Tolt for Icelandic horses. Baroness's Racetrack. The Baroness's Racetrack was an area slash race that was in disrepair for years. The Baroness always talked about it being a work in progress, but it remained in its under construction state all the way until 2022, when a quest line was added to remodel the area completely and finally complete the track. Mistfall Web Series The Mistfall Web Series was a 10 episode animated series released on Star Stable's YouTube channel in 2021. It featured both original characters and characters in the game. Shadow Seekers Shadow Seekers are a common enemy encountered in various quests in the game. They appear to be from Pandoria, but not a lot is known about these little guys. Hidden Golden Stars Golden stars were hidden in every level of Starshine Legacy as a collectible, a feature that also found its way to Star Stable Online. Each area has a set amount of golden stars hidden around the map. Collecting them doesn't actually do anything, but it's a fun little activity. Galper Thompson, General Galper Thompson is an NPC that shows up at Halloween each year, keeping watch over Galper's Keep, the temporary Halloween sub-area. He's essentially the Headless Horseman of Jorvik and has a long, interesting history behind him that can be discovered in a questline during Halloween. Steve's Farm Steve's Farm is kind of like THE spot to be in Star Stable. It sits pretty much smack in the center of the map, so it's one of the most popular locations to pick for your home stable. SSO Music Artists Star Stable has a couple of musical artists that exist in-game that actually make real-life music you can listen to on Spotify. Most notable examples would be Lisa Peterson, The Miscreants, and DJ Kai, who are all fictional artists within the game. Honorable mention to Nomi, who is a singer-songwriter under Star Stable's label, as well as a 3D artist and horse designer for the game. You have taken a dangerous fall. You have taken a dangerous fall. Try to be more careful in the future. This is the message that appears if you ride your horse off a cliff or generally do something that would get you killed in real life. It used to turn the screen red, but it was changed to gray. You also used to have to return to your home stable if you took too many dangerous falls in a row and depleted your horse's health all the way, but I'm honestly not sure if this is still a feature. I don't think your horse has health anymore, and the player never did since if you walked off a cliff on foot, your horse would still be the one taking damage. Maybe that's something I should have added to this iceberg. Dressage. Dressage is a real-life equestrian event that's essentially a dance routine on horseback. Star Stable added a dressage minigame in a recent event, but even before it was officially in the game, it has been hugely popular. Dressage clubs are easily the most popular type of club, and honestly, it kind of baffles me. <laughs> like, the dressage players do in the game looks kind of cool, but it's also nothing like real dressage, like, at all. But that's just my opinion, you do you. Unlockable areas. Not every location in Jorvik is immediately available to you when you boot up the game. All of the map except for Moorland and Fort Pinta are locked until you become a Star Rider. Once you do become a Star Rider, all of Silverglade is automatically unlocked, and leveling up and doing quests will eventually get you access to Jarvaheim, Golden Hills Valley, Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur, Pona, Mistfall, Redwood Point, and Wildwoods, typically in that order. Pandoric Rifts slash Runestones Closing Pandoric Rifts and activating runestones are two of the longest XP grind daily tasks in the game. They're crucial for continuing the main story quest and unlocking new areas, so get to work. Tier 3 uh, Okay, this first one I called Starshine Academy. I, it's That's wrong. It should be called Star Academy. So yeah, Star Academy. Starshine Legacy CD-ROM games are pretty well known, but they weren't the only piece of Star Stable Media before SSO. Star Academy is another CD-ROM game series that takes place in Jorvik, but it's not about horses. Instead, its main focus is on singing and dancing. Lisa Peterson from SSO and Starshine Legacy also appears in these games. Star Stable CD-ROM series The last set of Star Stable CD-ROM games released before SSO are the Season Rider games. There are four games, each based around a season. The Autumn Rider, 
the Winter Rider, the Spring Rider, and the Summer Rider. Free players can't jump. Nowadays, anyone who boots up Star Civil Online can jump freely as soon as you finish the tutorial, but that wasn't always the case. You used to not be able to jump with your horse unless you were a Star Rider and completed a quest in Silver Grade. I remember how thrilling it was to finally be able to jump when I finally convinced my mom to buy me the Star Rider subscription. Scarecrow Race During a certain quest line, you had to complete a race on Scarecrow Hill to advance the story. After the quest was over, the race used to be replayable with a shoehorned in dialogue saying why, but it was eventually removed from the game and then re-added as a Halloween exclusive event, which personally makes a lot more sense to me. April Fools Star Stable has had quite a few very iconic April Fools Day pranks. Some of the most notable would be the Super Shire and Car Stable. There haven't been any April Fools pranks in recent years though, likely to focus on more important things. Old Holiday Events There are a lot of yearly events on Star Stable. There are some old ones that have either been phased out or changed into something new, with more focus on unique game events rather than real-life holidays. Easter, Fortuna Festival, Jorvik Stables Open House, Valentine's Day, Midsummer, Fashion Week, and the Summer Beach Party have all either been changed or removed. Northern Jorvik Northern Jorvik is a bit of a mystery. The books have a map that showcases a couple locations. It's visited in Starshine Legacy and the Star Stable CD-ROMs, but there's currently nothing up there in SSO. Whenever the next location is released, I'd imagine it's going to be put up there, as it's the only part of the map that is still clouded. Northlink Northlink is the construction zone that blocks off access to the previously mentioned Northern Jorvik. Raptor Raptor is a fictional music artist in SSO. He used to do appearances in Jorvik City Mall, as well as shows during the Fashion Week event. Nowadays, he's retired from the music scene and occasionally makes cameos in random events with his pet wolf Shakira. Unicorns Star Stable's history with unicorns is a bit funny for me. They went from being very adamant that they would never be added to going, mm, maybe, to adding a horse that was almost a unicorn but not quite, to adding unicorn horn accessories for your horse, to just adding a unicorn. <laughs> Fort Pinta Disco General The Fort Pinta Disco comes to life every Friday and Saturday night, and players can come around to boogie. I think people often forget about this, but it's a pretty fun time. Horse Dancing a silly, often missed feature is that if you visit the disco and start dancing, your horse also busts a move outside. UFO A fun little secret area is the UFO. There's a secret achievement to be gained here, but otherwise it's just a mysterious little location that exists with no explanation. Character Update 1 You know, during all the outrage for the most recent character update, a lot of people complained about how much they missed the original characters. Did everyone forget that these are not the original characters. These are. We already went through this. It's like I'm reliving history. Everyone complains for a couple months and they get changed and then suddenly they're the superior version that is sacred and pure. I don't know, man. Personally, I think anything is an upgrade from these giraffes. Fridge doors. These hatches have been a mystery for ages. It was eventually noticed that the four fridge doors, as they've been dubbed by the community, make four out of five points of a star, with the hypothetical fifth being in the unreachable north. Riding over them lets you hear strange noises coming from inside, and sometimes ominous music starts playing. Visiting all four gets you an achievement. Old Home Stable Your home stable is where you keep all of your horses. It can be expanded to add more stalls, and if you run out of stalls for your horses, the rest can be put into the pasture and switched out at any time. It wasn't always this nice, though. It used to look like this. Pretty small, but it has its charm for sure. Horse Island Before the pasture in the home stable was added, you could only have ten horses. Any more than that, and they'd have to be sent to Horse Island for a vacation. And you had to pay for this every time. Me with my hundred plus horses I have now could never. Old Stable Girl If you want to keep all of your horses happy without having to care for each one individually, for a small fee, you can hire the Stable Girl Maya to automatically take care of them for you. Before Maya was the resident stable helper, there was an unnamed NPC as your Stable Girl. I kind of miss her sometimes. I named mine Rachel. Starter Horse Updates The Starter Horse has been updated twice. Once from Gen 1 to a gen known as 1.5 that only a few horses got, and once to the current Gen 3. Unlike most horses that got Gen 3 updates, the starter horse is automatically updated in your stable. You don't have to, like, buy a new one, of course. 
ponies are slower. Ponies used to be significantly slower than regular horses. They have their own special pony-only championship, and that was pretty much the only champ they had a chance in. At some point, ponies were updated to be as fast as any other horse, and you can be a serious contender in any race with your pony pals. Sheer cold. Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur is cold and snowy all year round, but it used to be so cold that your horse would be unable to gallop unless it was specifically a cold-resistant horse, like a fjord or a North Swedish. Mr. Sands is immortal. This fact was brought up pretty blatantly in the first Starshine Legacy game, but I feel like it's an often forgotten fact. It just adds another layer to his already mysterious character. I don't think we know why or how he's lived for so many centuries. Moving Pandoria Portals. Another oft-forgotten feature, after completing a certain story quest, a portal to Pandoria is available in a different location each day of the week for you to visit the dimension. It used to only be accessible with your starter horse, but now any horse can visit. Graphics Evolution. The Star Stable environmental graphics went through an overhaul in, I believe, 2019? Certain areas were left out of the update, and we're still waiting for Dino Valley, certain parts of Epona, and certain parts of South Hoof to receive their glow-ups. NPC model evolution. Certain NPC models have also gotten glow-ups over the years, most notably the Star Riders, Dark Riders, and, of course, Idris. The general style of NPCs has always been inconsistent, though. Compare some of the oldest models like this to some of the ones from the middle years, like this. They had a brief stint with the weirdly hyper-realistic. Lisa's dad worked for Dark Core. This is something that's mentioned in the books. Most people associate Lisa's father with being the owner of Starshine Ranch, but yeah, he actually used to work on the Dark Core oil rig. Guardiansdale Fifth Statue. Another old mystery is what happened to the fifth statue in Guardiansdale? The area description says someone blew it up by accident, but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we know how that happened. There is a story quest that took place in Guardiansdale that mentioned a prophecy about the fifth, assumed to be you, the player, but I don't think they ever mentioned what exactly happened to the destroyed statue. Cannon ships. There are only a couple pairings that have been confirmed in the game, but the most notable would be Maya and Alex. Their relationship was first teased during a small Christmas quest that had Maya blush as they sit under the mistletoe. Since then, their relationship has been confirmed, and they're shown going on dates pretty often. The only other current pairings that I can think of are Dr. Iron and Sigri and Juniper and Rocco. I'd also make an argument that there was something going on between Idris and Mario in that one quest, but that's not truly canon. The Star Stable is not one to shy away from queer representation though, which I love. Secret Locations General There are a number of secret locations in Star Stable that only have a description to help you find them. Once you walk into the location, its name will be added to the discovered areas list. There are a couple outliers though. Not everything hidden is bones. This is the description given to one of the secret areas. It's been in the game for as long as I can remember, but it doesn't actually exist. I actually found out very recently that this location has technically been found, but it's not a real place. You can find it and add it to your discovered areas list by jumping and getting yourself stuck between a wall and a specific tree. Two ancient forts. Another secret area description, two ancient forts tower on either side of this place that doesn't actually exist. Unlike the last one, this one has still never been found. Bread Island. The last famous, undiscoverable area is Bread Island. This one isn't even a secret location, its name is plain to see on the list, but it simply doesn't exist. Nowhere it even could be. It's truly a mystery. Ashland. Ashland is an area that exists on the map, but has been inaccessible since it was added. It's a volcanic wasteland north of Dino Valley. There's a path that leads right up to the entrance, but it's not able to be opened. People have been glitching themselves into Ashland since it's existed, and there are plenty of videos of what it looks like in there, but there's no telling if it'll ever actually open up or not. Horse Retirement Over the years, as time goes on and graphics and game engines evolve, the old Gen 1 and 2 horses are slowly being phased out. Every now and then, another old friend will leave the island, but if you've purchased one in the past, they'll stay with you forever, don't worry. Pintabian Speed Every now and then, the question of which horse is the fastest would float around. The answer is that all horses are equal speed, and only your horse's level and your gear affect it. However, for a while, due to... I'm not sure, an animation glitch, maybe? The Gen 2 Pintabian horses had an extra fast jump that meant they could clear races faster than any other breed. This was eventually passed, which I personally think is a good thing. You should be able to win championships on your starter horse. This is not a pay-to-win game. Some people might disagree, but 
We're not talking about that. Old bus system. If you want to go to Yorvik City, you gotta take the bus. You used to have to bring a bus ticket and wait for the bus to show up every couple minutes, similar to the ferries, but now you can just walk up and click the sign to instantly go to Yorvik City whenever you'd like. Circus ticket. Similar to the bus, you used to have to bring a circus ticket to enter Idris's circus, but now you can just click the door to enter. Hashtags. Currently, if you try to say something that the chat filter does not like, you'll get a little message telling you that the message wasn't approved for chat. It used to just send the message anyway and block out whatever offending words or phrases it didn't like with a bunch of hashtags. Both of these systems are annoying, but necessary. Time passes slowly. Time in Jorvik is wonky. The game establishes at the very beginning that you are a writer coming to Jorvik for the summer, but uh, my girl has been here for about seven summers now. The main story quest is supposed to take place over a couple of months, but that of course causes some inconsistencies with all the holiday events and such. It's typical video game mechanics, but it's pretty funny when you really think about it. Bark Hearts. The Bark Hearts were two magical horses that were advertised as limited, that once they were gone, they're not coming back. Star Stable kept their word on this, and the horses have not been back since, but similarly themed horses were added to make it up to people who miss them. Granny Hair. The Granny Hair hairstyle was randomly removed for reasons I truly don't know. When the characters, and by extension the hairstyles, got updated for the second time, this hairstyle was added back into the game. Jojo Siwa. In 2018, Star Stable collaborated with Jojo Siwa. You could buy her iconic bow and ponytail hairstyle and pet dogs that resembled her real life dog. Oddly enough, Jojo Siwa is responsible for two major game milestones. She was the first character model to use the current style, and the dogs added with the first pets that could run alongside your horse. Shout out Jojo, I guess. Spirit Riding Free In 2017, SSO collabed with the TV show Spirit Riding Free. You could find Spirit around Jorvik, build trust with him, and eventually buy him to add him to your stable. Since this was a limited collaboration, Spirit was removed from the game after a couple weeks, but if you got him while he was there, he'll stay with you. I got him too, of course. Community Made Horses There have been four horses created by the community. This Jorvik starter pony designed via a fan vote during a live show. The free 10th anniversary horse was also designed by a vote in the months leading up to the event, and most recently, these two rainbow-themed magical horses were inspired by player designs entered into a contest. I think the very first three magical horses were also somewhat created by fan designs, but I'm not 100% sure. Horse slowing down automatically. If you tell your horse to go a specific gate, they'll keep going at that gate until you tell them otherwise. For a long while though, your horse would start to slow down automatically if you didn't keep pressing the forward arrow to keep them going. Even though this hasn't been in the game for a while, I still find myself spamming the arrow when I'm racing anyway. Old habits die hard, I guess. Tier 4. Wild Horse Glitch. People love wild horses, and if you wanted to kick your rider off and have your horse explore the island on its own, good luck. Some people would go into the files and delete stuff to get this effect, or there were ways to force this bug to happen in-game. I actually successfully did this glitch once, got a warning pop-up telling me that exploiting bugs was not allowed, and I freaked out, closed the game, and never did it again. <laughs> anyway, Star Stable presumably got sick of people hacking into the files just to play without a writer, so now there's an option in-game to hide your writer so you can live your wild horse dreams without living in fear of getting banned. Slash gestures. There's a shortcut to use emotes by typing slash and then whatever emote you want to use. There's one hidden easter egg emote that can only be accessed by typing slash gestures. I don't know what this is, but it's pretty funny. Do this emote in front of the UFO to get an achievement. The Ice Witch There's a myth in the game that there's a witch that lives in Isendel in Dino Valley. It's been theorized that the witch is actually Katya the Dark Rider, but considering the Ice Witch's existence is only a rumor in the lore, I don't think we'll ever get confirmation one way or another. Star Stable Friends app this app is kind of forgotten, as it's mostly obsolete at this point. You can check the game news, message your friends, and purchase stable care without having to open the game, along with a few other small features. It was really helpful for me when I went away and couldn't play the game for a while, but now you can check news and buy stable care via the Star Stable app without having to open the game. Messaging your friends is now kind of all this app has to offer. Original Jorvik Wild Horses These are Jorvik Wild Horses. These are Nixies and Windfells. But before these existed, these were known as Jorvik Wild Horses. This was eventually changed and now all magical horses have their own unique breed names and the Jorvik Wild Horses are completely unrelated. 
Automatic Magical Horse Transformation. If you want to switch between your magical horse's normal and magical look, just press H. But when the first magical horses were released, they would change between their magical and normal coats automatically, being regular looking in towns and magical looking in the wilds. People of course found ways to glitch this so they could be magical all the time, but now it's completely up to you how you want your horse to look no matter where you are. Slow Magical Horses You know, I completely forgot about this until I started making this list, but the first magic horses were actually slower than regular horses for some reason. Faster than ponies, but slower than average. This was changed at some point, and now all magical horses are the same speed as any other horse. Speed boosts on roads. You get a little speed boost when you run on a road. Or used to? Now I'm gonna be so real, I can't figure out if this is still in the game or not. It's an odd, mostly unknown feature, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was removed. Star Stable News. There used to be a little news video detailing the features of each update every Wednesday. It was eventually discontinued due to the stress of the rapid schedule on the hosts, but it was a fun little experience while it lasted. Secret Quests There's a number of hidden quests you can discover around the game. Some of them are pretty tricky to find, so good luck. Furfall Furfall was the old name for the area now known as Mistfall before it was released. No one knows why it was changed, but I like the name Mistfall a lot better. Furfall is kind of a mouthful. Mystery Statues these spooky statues can be found in two places on Jorvik, Silverglade and Valdale. Their origins are completely unknown. One also appears in Starshine Legacy, Episode 2, inside Pine Hill Manor. Loading Screen Cat This little guy used to give tips on the loading screen. I think his name is Rufus. He's sort of an icon of old Star Stable nostalgia. GHV Entry Glitch Glitching into Golden Hills Valley before you unlocked it was a pretty common occurrence. If someone started a group race with you standing on the other side of the gate, you would be teleported inside for the race. I did this glitch once, got a warning that I was in a locked area, got scared, and never did it again. Good times. Don't bother trying this now though, I'm pretty sure this bug got patched ages ago. Isengate and the Cultors. The Cultors were a group of NPCs that you could do daily quests with before they were suddenly removed from the game. They were shown going behind the Isengate, fleeing something in a brief quest, and they haven't been seen since. I hope they're doing all right. Old Fjord System. The Calthers used to be the sellers of the Fjord horses. You had to do daily quests with them until your reputation got high enough to buy one of the Fjord horses. This system, along with the horses themselves, were removed when the updated Fjord horses were added. Butter Goods are vampires. The Butter Goods are an NPC family featured in a couple quests. YouTuber Eleanor Nightwalker made a theory that the Buttergood family were actually vampires back in 2020. And honestly, it seems like this has actually been kind of confirmed or at least hinted at. I don't know if this was Star Stable's original intentions with these guys, or if they just added the vampire hints as a nod to this popular theory, but either way, good job to Eleanor. Actual Iceberg There used to be a small event where a large iceberg would show up on the coast of Jorvik where you could buy pet seals. The iceberg and the seals haven't made a return since 2017. Retired Pets There's a couple other pets that are pretty much removed pigs and the frogs. Although apparently the pigs were briefly added back for a week in October of 2023 according to the wiki, but I had literally no idea about this, I didn't see anything about it, and now I can't verify it, so do with that what you will. St. Patrick's Day to Pride Transition The old St. Patrick's Day event, called Fortuna Festival, took place in March and had players chase rainbows to collect gold to trade with a leprechaun. It was removed in 2018, but the rainbow chasing activity came back in 2019, rebranded as the Rainbow Festival. The Cloud Kingdom also returned alongside the Rainbow Hunt. This Rainbow Festival, that just happened to take place in June, wasn't originally specified to be a Pride Month event, but over the next couple years they added Pride Fly bows for your horse, and had a bunch of vague statements about celebrating being yourself, until they finally just came out and said, Happy Pride Month! Honestly, I couldn't be happier about this. SSO HQ in-game the Star Stable Headquarters makes a little appearance in the game in a hidden corner of Jorvik City. This is one of my favorite easter eggs. Welcome home. Clothing slash tack icons. All icons for clothing and tack used to look unidentifiable. The only way you could tell what was what was by hovering over the item. Now, each item has a unique picture showing exactly what it is. Except on mobile. Mobile has reverted back to the old ways, presumably for storage reason, but... Without a way to mouse over the items to see what they are, it's pretty nightmarish. Good luck finding anything. Fort Pinto Shark. This little dude would show up at Fort Pinto Beach every now and then. He just swims around for a bit and leaves. I don't think he's still in the game, but I also haven't checked. Maybe he's still hanging around. The Bulldozer. 
This bulldozer drives around between Silverglade and Northlink. It'll honk at you if you get in its way, and hurts if it runs you over, so watch out. Purple Car Even more notorious than the bulldozer is the infamous Purple Car. It used to drive around on the road to Silverglade and mercilessly run over players, honking at them when they got close. The purple car was removed, thank god, but it still makes cameos in certain races to strike fear into your heart. Chat Heart The ability to put a little heart emoji into the chat by holding alt and pressing 9 on the number pad four times used to only exist on Swedish servers, but was eventually added globally. Although right now it simply doesn't work for me. I don't know if this is a glitch or if it was removed, but I miss it. Horses need care throughout the day. Now, once you do your daily caring for your horse, it stays good the whole day. But you used to have to fill its needs every now and then. I don't mind this feature being gone. There's nothing worse than being about to start a championship when suddenly your horse needs a snack. Sergeant Tom. If you've ever listened to the Star Stable soundtrack on Spotify, you might have noticed the name Sergeant Tom on all the old tracks. I never thought much of this, but lately I did some research to see just who this guy was. Turns out, it's not a guy at all. Sergeant Tom was the name of what I think used to be an old record label of some sort. It doesn't appear to exist anymore, but the same guy who did the music under the Sergeant Tom name is still the one making the music now, just without the old label. Shout out to Axel Bellander. Testing area. Sneaky players who have busted the game in one way or another to get a look at unreleased areas have discovered what is commonly known as the testing area. People originally thought this funky area in Northern Jorvik was a new area under development, but people quickly realized that it seemed to be just a little staging area to test out assets for completely unrelated locations. Easter Starter Horses During the old Easter event, you could talk to this rabbit to turn your starter horse crazy colors. It was a fun little feature. Unused Furniture Right after Jorvik City's release, the new quests would give you pieces of furniture labeled for use in the future. There were also furniture shops labeled opening soon around the city. Naturally, people assumed that we would soon be getting apartments or customizable home stable soon, but time went on and nothing came of it. It was eventually confirmed that the custom home stables had been planned, but the project was overambitious for the time and wasn't working out, so it was scrapped. Also, fun fact, for a little while, these pieces of unusable furniture were unable to be removed from your inventory. Luckily that was fixed, but now they just live in my storage for all eternity. No jumping in towns. You used to not be able to jump in Silverglade, Cape West Fishing Village, or Jarlheim. It was pretty annoying, but has since been changed, so you can jump as much as you like. Only carrying near stables. For a long time, you could only do carrying, such as feeding, watering, brushing, and hoof picking for your horse near the designated stables. But now you can care for your horse no matter where you are. Dolly Style. Jojo Siwa and Spirit being added to the game were pretty iconic, but one collaboration that often gets slept on is with Dolly Style. Dolly Style is a Swedish pop group whose music and merch was added to the game at the disco for a while. Personally, I adore Dolly Style. I discovered them through Star Stable and still listen to them to this day. Treehouse Key. Anyone remember this thing? Yeah, there's a small quest line around this treehouse in Greendale, and you had to get the key for it. I don't remember anything else about this quest, but I still have the key, and I can still visit the treehouse if I was so inclined. And while gathering footage for this video, I found that I hadn't found this spider or this star in the treehouse. Interesting. Starshine in Greendale. Something often forgotten by older players is that Starshine roamed these around Greendale before you unlock the quest with him. I remember following this strange blue horse around for ages, just wondering who he was, and was delighted when I finally got a quest to talk to him. Glue Man. The Glue Man is a spooky story slash legend that gets mentioned a lot around Halloween. The first instance of the Glue Man story was this absolutely terrifying Halloween scare from 2019. If you stayed in your home stable for a couple minutes, you would start to hear a small girl singing creepily about something called the Glue Man. This freaky little child was hiding in one of your storerooms in your home stable and oh my god I just about pissed myself the first time I heard this. The song she sings is on Spotify and it still freaks me out. Truly the best Halloween scare we've ever gotten. Gen 1 horse in Moreland. Almost all of the Gen 1 horses have been removed from the game, but one still remains in Moreland. This little dude is eternal. Bucket usage. Your bucket can be used 12 times before it needs to be refilled at a well, but it used to only be 3. 12 is definitely an improvement. Golden Star Race. There's a secret race you can clear to get a secret golden star. 
I never found this on my own, I saw it online. It's very well hidden. Reed Kessler and Toby Larson. This one was supposed to be added to the iceberg, but somehow got left out, so I'm just adding it in now. Reed Kessler and Toby Larson are both real-life writers that were in Star Stable for some time. Reed is an American show jumper, and Toby is a Swedish horse trainer best known for the show The Pony Emergency. They both had small quest lines that would reward you with a jacket that looked like their own. Both were removed in 2019 due to contracts expiring, I'd imagine. Tier 5 Merch Store Did you know there used to be a store for physical merch on Star Stable's site? It was discontinued a long time ago, but I got this sick jacket from there before it closed. It doesn't fit me very well anymore, but I'm never getting rid of it. New Hillcrest NPCs The NPCs around New Hillcrest are... odd. They were a hot topic for a while, but seem to be mostly forgotten these days. I mean, what is she doing? Talk about shady. Screams and Mistfall There were rumors going around that at night you could hear screams from the depths of Mistfall. And this was actually true. Kinda. There are screams that play at night in Mistfall, but they're not a person. They're elk. That's what elk sound like, apparently. Yikes. Crying in the castle. Another rumor was that at night, you could hear a girl crying in the Silverglade castle. It's supposedly Linda who is being held captive in the castle for some time, and the crying goes away once she's freed. I think I remember this being true. I don't have any way to check now. There is footage of it, but this could be edited. I just don't remember. Star Stable Randomness. This is one of my few entries about something outside of the game because it's a personal favorite of mine. Star Stable Randomness were a genre of YouTube videos that were most popular from 2014 to about 2017. It's essentially a YouTube poop if you're familiar with the term. It was just taking popular memes and putting them over Star Stable. The humor is so painfully 2010s, it's truly amazing. I'm the I remember spending Thanksgiving hiding in the back of my grandmother's house watching these, praying not to get caught. Horse running away bug. There's a pretty popular and harmless bug where if you start to dismount your horse, press the windows key, and then spam the forward arrow as soon as you open the game window back up, your horse would just speed off into the distance leaving you behind. It was pretty hilarious. Lunging bug. This was another popular bug that would make your horse circle around you like you were lunging it but I unfortunately never did it, so I don't remember what the process was. Disco the dog. This little dude used to hang out in Silverglade, and apparently he shows up in Star Academy and the Autumn Rider, and he appears on several posters around the Fort Pinta Disco. I saw on the wiki that he was removed, and I was so confused because I could have sworn he was still in the game, but turns out I was thinking of another dog named Techno, who is apparently Disco's older brother. He still hangs out around the riding hall. Live events. There have been a couple Star Stable real-life events over the years. There have been Minecraft Live-esque livestream events, but my personal favorite was the Star Stable on the road event they did. I got to go to a little event with small activities, snacks, photo ops, talk to other players, meet some game masters, and get goodies. All around an amazing experience. Circus Exclusive Magical Horses There's a race at Idris' Circus where you get turned into a magical golden horse. The group version of this race turns everyone into a different magical horse that cannot be purchased, aside from Galloper Thompson's original horse, which was eventually made available. Although, while I was trying to get footage for this, turns out this group race is incredibly buggy and I couldn't even finish it properly, so enjoy that. Galloper Thompson's Secret Appearances Before Galloper Thompson was the host of Galloper's Keep during Halloween, he snuck his way into the game back in 2016. At night, every hour, a roar and a scream could be heard. This is the sound of Galloper appearing. He showed up in a different forest, ran around for a bit, and then vanished with another scream. If you could hunt down and catch Galloper, he would fly at you and you'd be teleported back to your home stable to find a gift sitting in front of you. Inside was a shirt and a necklace. The necklace couldn't be used for anything and was encouraged to be sold, but I kept all of mine. 
Hunting for Galloper with my friends every night was one of my all-time favorite Star Stable memories, made better by the fact that it was discovered by player investigation only. Nothing in the first Halloween news post told you who Galloper was or where slash how to find him. To this day, I always keep one of his necklaces in my inventory as a memento. Fort Pinta Disco Bug One of the most fun bugs to ever be found was the Disco Bug. If you walked your horse along the entrance of the disco that had an invisible wall to keep horses out, and then turned to the side after a while, you and your horse would be absolutely launched at the speed of sound across the map until you hit something. Sometimes you'd only be flung a couple feet, sometimes you'd be launched so high into the air you'd be flung halfway across the map until you hit the ground and died. It was amazing. The Story of Jorvik video The Story of Jorvik is an old promotional video that was posted on Star Stable's YouTube channel. It's a CG animated short that tells, well, the story of Jorvik. The original one appears to be gone, but the updated version made in 2017 is still on the channel to this day. Texas Bluebell You can meet Texas in a short quest where you find a lost fool in Greendell and help rescue him alongside Lisa. There's an audiobook on Spotify that expands on his story. You could also raise Texas in the Star Stable Horses app so you could have him for yourself in the game. I believe this was a limited event and Texas is no longer available, but I have him. Championship Lower Group Bug If there are enough players at a championship, they'll be distributed into groups to avoid lag. Groups are currently chosen by player level, with players of similar levels being put in the same group. However, it used to be based on the individual stats each player had, based on the horse's level and their gear. This might seem like the more ideal sorting system, but it had a major flaw. If you simply removed your horse's tack and or put on low-level clothes when the groups were being formed, you'd be marked as having low stats and put into a low group. Then you could quickly change back into your high-level gear and be competing against poor low-level players who didn't have good stats yet. And now they have no chance. I'll admit I use this life hack every single championship just to have a better chance at winning. The new system works well to avoid this kind of exploitation. Through the floor in Fort Pinta. For the longest time, there was a wall in Fort Pinta that had no collision. You could just walk through it and end up chilling inside of the walls. When I saw on a bug fix log that this was fixed in the year of our lord 2023, I was shocked. I just assumed it would be there forever. Gotta wonder what finally made them decide to fix it. Birdie. Okay, I just had to include Birdie. This absolutely traumatized looking bird recently had a rise in Tumblr popularity for some reason. She has a small quest attached to her to help her find her chicks. In the recent Hollywoods overhaul, Birdie now has a cute little hat and looks significantly less traumatized. Good for her. Level 6. Wee! <laughs> this is another kind of silly entry. There's an NPC named Emma that has a couple of quest lines. She often rides on the back of the player's horse to get from one place to another during these quests, and whenever you jump, she yells her iconic, Wee! Why it's spelled with I's and not E's is beyond me. The ghost you can take trick-or-treating during the Halloween event actually has the same voice line as Emma play when you jump, but the letters don't float around. Phil. Phil was the nickname given to the old chat filter system, the one with the hashtags. Phil, short for filter, was such a widespread name that some people, including myself, were not sure if he was a real person that moderated the chat or not. He wasn't, of course, and the nickname eventually phased itself out. No one refers to the chat filter as Phil anymore. It's a shame. Circus Druids Ever notice these guys inside Idris' circus? They look like the hooded druids, like Avalon. Their presence is completely unexplained and honestly, pretty spooky. We know you read these. This phrase can be found in the Star Stable files. It's no secret that players have always dug into their files to try to get early info on possible new updates. Star Stable is well aware of this, and while they don't encourage that kind of stuff, they did leave a little message for the players who just couldn't keep their eyes away. Jorvik is hard to remember. A fascinating fact that only ever gets brought up in the book series is that Jorvik messes with the minds of people who visit it. If you visit Jorvik and then leave, your memories of your time there will start to fade and all the magic will be forgotten. GED Office There's unused assets for a GED office left over in the SSO files. This office was teased as a future area to visit once, but has never made an appearance. Star Stable with Stacy slash Stacy Place Okay, here's my one somewhat YouTuber-related entry. Stacy Place was a popular Star Stable YouTuber who eventually got invited to do videos for Star Stable's own channel. She made little game tutorials that are still up on their channel today. Now, Stacy is fully employed by Star Stable Entertainment as a game director, which is so cool to me. I also met her at the live event I attended. T-shirt design contest. 
All the way back in 2013, Star Stable hosted a t-shirt design contest for players to get their own custom t-shirts in the game. I thought all the winning shirts were still in the game, but for whatever reason, I could only find a couple of them in the global store. Star Stable Run. This was the name of the seemingly scrapped Star Stable mobile game. I think it was supposed to be a Temple Run style game, but it never actually got made. Alexander and Hannibal. I really just wanted to add these guys because they've terrorized me for years. These spooky little twins live on Gold Spore Farm. They have a daily quest where you play hide and seek with them, and they just freak me out. I mean, come on, this dude is named Hannibal. Hannibal! I thought I'd seen the last of them years ago, but they just showed up in this year's haunted trail ride during Halloween. They were just there, playing hide and seek with each other. At least Star Stable has acknowledged that they're creepy. Player Justin Moreland. Alright. This is the one thing that I genuinely cannot find evidence of, but I've seen many people saying they remember it, so I'm just gonna go for it. At some point, there was a player that appeared in Moreland who was named Justin Moreland, with a player level of zero. Justin Moreland is the name of a prominent NPC, and is certainly not an available character name option. Different rumors spread around on if this was an employee, or a hacker, or a bot. The general consensus I've gathered was that it was either an employee or a sanctioned bot used to promote upcoming story quests. I swear this actually happened, please believe me. Nail polish. The idea of a nail salon was teased in 2015. A year later, in 2016, an interview with a game director revealed that, yeah, that didn't work out, but maybe the idea would come back in the future. Now, in the future, there is still no nail salon. Expensive Frisians. Did you know, when the very first Gen 1 Frisian horse came out, it cost a whopping 1,299 star coins. Even though some might say that today's horses are quite expensive, none have crossed a thousand mark. But did it actually cost that much? I've seen plenty of players saying they remember that price, but all the old footage I could find very clearly showed them costing 990. It's incredibly hard to find remaining news back from 2013, but I did find one decade-old blog post that said that the horses would be released with a sale price of 990, but once the sale was over, they would go up to 1,299. I have no idea if they actually followed through with that price increase, but it seems like they didn't. The Gen 2 Frisians were released the very next year for 890, so I'd be shocked if the price was ever actually 1299. The more you know. Horse Die Code there is a line of code found in the game's files titled something to the effect of horse die animation and horse dead animation. When this was discovered, all the little theorists went wild. Was our horse going to die in the game? Rumors spread that there would eventually be a quest that killed off her starter horse. This obviously wasn't true and never happened. I do have one guess as to what this is though. In Starshine Legacy, there's an animation where Starshine collapses and then lays motionless on the ground. He's not actually dead, of course, but I'm willing to bet that this is the horse die animation, and the code probably found a way into SSO during early development. Perhaps they intended to use it during a quest in the game, but never ended up happening. Swedenborg. Swedenborg is this little dog that speaks in any animal noise but barking. He's in charge of giving you the Dino Valley race for some reason. He's apparently owned by a scientist who genetically modified him. Swedenborg is the last name of a Swedish scientist, so we can assume that's his namesake. His existence baffles me, and I feel like no one talks about this weirdo enough. An icon, for sure. Region-specific trailers. Trailers are the game's way to fast travel. For a small fee of Jorvik shillings or star coins, you can pay for them to take you to any other trailer on the map. But something I totally forgot about is that trailers used to be region-locked. The trailers were only able to take you to other trailers in their own zone. The Silverglade, Harvest Counties, and Golden Hill zones could not be traveled between. You were stuck in one area. At some point, this was changed so the trailers could take you to anywhere, no matter what zone it was in. Dino Valley Reputation Login Bug Alright, last one that has kind of spotty information. Does anyone remember when you logged in, a sound of bling would play? It seems normal, right? A nice sound effect for logging in. Except it was actually the sound of your reputation bar from Nick Stoneground's camp going up. For the longest time, the XP bar would show up in Nick Stoneground's camp if those quests were active, would pop up and make its sound effect right as you logged in, even if you were absolutely nowhere near Nick Stoneground's camp or weren't even doing those quests anymore. It was hard to notice since the bar vanished almost immediately after the screen finished loading, but I swear to god it happened. And I know I'm not the only one who experienced this, but now that I'm thinking about it, due to sheer lack of documentation, this probably should have been on the bottom tier. Tier 7 Star Stable Archie. 
Hi Star Family, Star Stable Archie here. Archie was a fan favorite game master back in the day. He primarily did voiceovers for videos like tutorials and news on the SSO YouTube channel. The video Star Stable Fails by Archie was particularly popular, sitting at 261,000 views. It was confirmed that he no longer works for the company, and I think it's a shame that most people have completely forgotten this guy. To this day, I still quote, Golden Hills. Fred the Tree. Fred the Tree has such a wholesome story. Ever noticed this little tree in Epona and wondered why he was there? Well, back when Epona was first released, a tree accidentally got placed smack in the middle of the road. Starsable was planning on just deleting this tree, but the players, who nicknamed the tree Fred, rallied around the little guy to save him. Hashtag save Fred worked, and Fred was safely moved out of the road to a new location, with a little sign memorializing the group effort. Going to visit Fred and reading the plaque will grant you an achievement. Dolly the Sheep Next to the ferry station and cafe in Yarlheim, there's a little sheep named Dolly who wanders around in circles behind a fence. Dolly has no quests attached to her and is never mentioned by any NPCs. She's just there. I can only assume her namesake is the first ever cloned sheep who was named Dolly, but that just makes her even spookier, not gonna lie. Dolly's got an updated look, but she's still hanging around in Yarlheim, so go say hi. Salon music. A couple of the salons in Yorvik have this song playing in the background as you shop. This song is a bit of a mystery. It doesn't exist anywhere outside the game except for direct screen recordings of the game. It's never been released by Star Stable, this is the only place it lives. The background white noise is also not a separate sound effect, it's connected directly to the music track. I don't know, I just find this song fascinating. Other unknown music tracks. The salon music isn't the only song in the game that's hard to track down. There's quite a few tracks that have never been released outside the game that I have no clue of the origins of. Some of the really old tracks sound like they're probably stock music, but I haven't been able to find exactly what was used. There's a lot of examples of completely unknown songs, like the original circus music, the original cafe music, the pony race music, the clock tower music, the disco music, and so many more. I highly recommend checking out the channel Anna Deer Night. They've got a bunch of these unknown songs uploaded. Browsing Collection Speaking of music, We've already been over most of Star Stable's music artists, but there's actually one more. Browsing Collection appears to be the real-life band behind the fictional band The Miscreants. They actually competed in 2022's Melody Festivalen, which is the competition that helps select Sweden's Eurovision entry for the year. The song they entered with, Face in the Crowd, has since been used in Star Stable as well. They're pretty cool, check them out. Mazarin Concept art for a character named Mazarin was shown in a Star Stable magazine back in 2018. She's supposed to be a witch who is mentored by Mrs. Holdsworth. She also has a shape-shifting cat. She looks pretty cool, but she seems to have been scrapped. Nothing mentioning her has been seen since the original teaser. That fence on Paddock Island that you can't jump over. Yeah, this might be a bit niche, but have you ever noticed when doing the Paddock Island Wilderness Race that your horse just refuses to jump over one fence? You know, that one with the roses in front of it by the house? Like, no matter what, it just won't jump it. I have no clue why. Except, while recording footage for this, I noticed that the fence was changed and actually can be jumped now, so nice. TV commercial. Star Seal has plenty of advertisement on Instagram, like most things these days, but they've actually had several TV commercials in the past. That's how I discovered the game, actually. They had a sponsorship deal with Disney Channel. Going on an adventure with a good friend can take you on the ride of your life. Starstable.com is a proud sponsor of Disney Channel. Some features require paid subscription. And oh boy, I saw that ad so many times and was just so intrigued that I finally cracked and asked my mom if I could get the game. Best decision of my life right there. Your Vijan language slash original voice clips. I'm a mom. Oh, that one. I'm a... I'm a... Hear that? That is the Yorvegian language. These sound clips have been used since Starshine Legacy, I'm pretty sure, and they're still in the game to this day. I'm unsure if these were originally recorded by Star Stable or if they're stock sounds from the depths of the internet, but I haven't heard them anywhere else, so I have to assume they're original. Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur Namesake 
You might hear the name Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur and see this thing and just think, well, that's why it's called that. But the name most likely actually comes from the original name of the company that became Star Stable Entertainment. The history is a bit fuzzy. A lot of the sites I found seems to have perhaps been poorly translated, but the company that originally made the Starshine Legacy games, Hidden Entertainment, seems to have also been called Hidden Dinosaur, or Hidden Dinosaur might have been an alias for the founder, Michael Stenmark. It's really unclear, but it's generally assumed that the Valley of Hidden Dinosaur is a reference to the old company name in some way. Scarecrow Hill, Heart, and Sand Did you know there's a little heart in the sand on the beach behind Scarecrow Hill? I didn't until very recently. I like that it's right where the roots of the sleeping widow reach across the water, like it's symbolizing her connection to the other primeval tree. Bulletin board notes. Lastly, the thing that inspired me to make this whole thing. The notes on the bulletin board in the home stable. Upon first glance, it might seem like there's nothing but incoherent scribbles on them, but if you look closely, you can actually read them. Star stable something. Thank you, with the smiley face. The long note is very blurry, but I can tell the beginning definitely says Star Stable Online is made for something adventures. And then it continues. The player is able to take something, horses, something, explore the world of Jorvik, something, people, meet new friends, and many more fun things. It seems that it's basically just a description of the game itself. How meta. Monday, 4.30 club meeting is visible on the orange note. The yellow one I can't decipher definitively, and I have no clue what the white list is. There's also a feeding schedule, little pictures that still have the original characters on them, and of course, the Star Stable logo itself. Well, that is all for this absolutely massive list. I feel like I kept getting more and more unhinged as the list went down, but I guess that's just the nature of these things. There's definitely a few things I left off. I mean, I never even mentioned this thing, but I think I covered a pretty good amount. I hope everyone enjoyed, and thank you for watching! Bye!